Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the course Engineering Chemistry. Myself Dr. Harika Patnala, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, MLR Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. In the previous class, we have discussed about the dry cell. One of the example of the dry cell is Leclan cell, which is a primary battery which is having short life, low capacity and low energy density. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the one more primary battery called gene care battery. Overview of the gene care battery is, in this battery we are going to learn about the, its introduction, its life, uh, capacity, energy density, shelf life, construction, what is the anode we have chosen, cathode and electrolyte, working condition, how the energy is generated with the help of this electrolyte, anode and cathode materials and its applications. Introduction. The gene battery system is noted for its high energy density. This is the battery is having high energy density capacity, but it had been used only in large in number and low power batteries only for signaling and navigational and aid applications. With the development of the improved air electrodes, the high rate capability of the system was improved even in the small button type batteries are now used widely in hearing aids electronics and similar applications. Nowadays we are using because of the high rate capability the zinc air battery we are using small button type. There is inlet for air. These are the inlets for the air. These batteries have very high energy density has no active cathode material is needed. Here the cathodic material is oxygen which is not active. Not an active cathodic material is needed in this battery. Construction of a zinc air battery. In the construction of a zinc air battery, the three main components of the zinc air battery is anode, cathode, and electrolyte. The anode is nothing but zinc granules. The cathode is oxygen, which is coming from air. Here we have taken the carbon plate, porous carbon plate, which is a support for the oxygen. The electrolyte material is 20% sodium hydroxide solution and we have chosen the separator not to mix the anodic and cathodic materials. Let us know, zinc air battery consists of an anode called zinc granules. Granules of zinc is which is mixed with 20% NaOH electrolyte solution. Cathode can contain a porous carbon plate. Porous carbon plate does not react in the reaction, which provides site for the reduction reaction, the place at which the reduction reaction has been taken place, where the oxygen is reduced to hydroxide, hydroxide and do not involve in the reaction. This is the porous carbon plate at which the reduction reaction taken place, it does not involve in the reaction. Carbon is a catalytically activator to absorb the oxygen. So, in order to absorb the oxygen on the carbon plate, we have added a catalyst on the carbon plate. The anode and the cathode compartments are separated by a separator and both are encased in a plastic or ebonite insulator. So, not in order to not to mix anode and cathodic materials, both are separated by a separator, which acts as an insulator also. The oxygen is supplied from the outside air. Just the from the air itself, we are getting the oxygen, which diffuses into the cell as it is needed. The air cathode only acts as a reaction site, which is not consumed. Since the air cathode is theoretically has infinite life, this is the air cathode which is having infinite life, which is lo low cost. The electrical, the capacity of the battery completely relays is determined by the anode capacity. So, the battery life is completely depends upon the anodic material, does not depends upon the cathodic material because the cathodic life was infinite life. The electrical capacity of the battery is determined by only by the anodic capacity. Let us see the diagram of this zinc air battery. Let us take a case in which encased this is the anodic compartment anodic compartment 
which is separated by a separator. This is a separator. There is a another compartment where in which we can take the electrolyte solution. Electrolyte is nothing but twenty percent NaOH solution. In anode is zinc metal. We have chosen the anode is zinc metal, and the cathode is nothing but which is having a porous carbon plates. These are the porous carbon plates. This is a porous carbon. This also porous carbon. This also porous carbon. In which, if there is a active catalyst, there is an active catalyst which is binded to the porous carbon. Here, there is an inlet for oxygen. Inlet for oxygen. We are getting this oxygen from air. So the oxygen which enters into the porous carbon plate, it is attached on the active catalyst. It will bind on the active catalyst where the reduction reaction has been taken place. This is the cathodic compartment. In this diagram, we are having the anodic compartment, cathodic compartment. An electrolyte of 20% KnOH solution. The anode is nothing but zinc metal. The cathode was porous carbon plate, which is a supporting one, and the inlet for the oxygen. The porous carbon plate is covered with an activated catalyst, where the reaction site of oxygen reduction, sorry, where the reduction has been taken place. Let us see the reactions involved. The anodic half cell reaction is here in near the zinc metal. The oxidation has been taken place where the zinc metal has been oxidized. It releases the electrons. It releases the electrons. The electrons moves from anodic compartment to towards the cathodic compartment. Moves towards the anodic compartment to the cathodic compartment through load. The anodic half cell reaction was where zinc was oxidized to Zn plus two plus two electrons. The cathodic half cell reaction was where oxygen half O2 at the reaction site reacts with water molecules and two electrons gives rise to two OH minus ions. Where zinc is oxidized at the anode. Where oxygen is reduced at the cathode site, and these zinc ions will move from anode compartment to towards the cathodic compartment through the electrolyte. If you see here, the zinc was oxidized here. Zinc electrons will move from this side to this side, and the oxygen which was reduced into the hydroxide ions, it will move from the cathode towards the anodic compartment. So overall, we will get the zinc hydroxide, which was very less stable. So it is further decomposed to zinc hydroxide is further decomposed to zinc oxide plus H two O. So zinc was at anode, it gets oxidized and releases the two electrons. Electrons moves from anodic compartment towards the Cathodic compartment. If you see this diagram, electrons are moving from the anodic compartment towards the cathodic compartment to the external circuit. Zinc ions are moving towards the internally to the electrolyte solution towards the cathodic compartment. So, where at the cathodic compartment, oxygen was reduced to the hydroxide ions. So, you will get the zinc hydroxide, which is less stable. It gets decomposed to zinc oxide and H two O. The overall net reaction was zinc plus Half O2 gives rise to zinc oxide. This is the overall chemical reaction of this zinc air battery. The advantages of this battery was high volumetric energy density, long shelf life, which was sealed. When it was sealed, it is having long shelf life. When it was opened, air enters into it. It starts working. 
unless if you open the seal it doesn't works if once you open the seal it starts working so the jinker battery which is also called as a reserve battery the the key component within the jinker battery was air that's why it is also called as a reserve battery it has long shelf life when it is sealed does not produce harmful products jinker battery does not produce any harmful products the applications in the telecommunication area jinker batteries are used for the communication devices such as pagers email devices and wireless messaging devices recently jinker coin type batteries coin type batteries nothing but a battery which is of coin size having small holes that is the inlet for the air inlet for the air if it is sealed there is no inlet for the air so it doesn't starts working once it was opened open cell structure the air enters into it and starts working and releasing the energy were employed in the wireless telecom headsets and used in the bluetooth and low power digital wireless protocol system so these are the small type batteries which are used in many bluetooth systems and headsets the limitations are drying out and limiter power output once it is having open structure it starts drying and it also having a limited power output with this in today's class we have discussed about the introduction and the construction and within the construction what are the components anode cathode and the electrolyte the anode was the zinc granules the cathode was the oxygen and which was uh, which was uh, absorbed by the on the carbon plate on the por porous carbon plate along with the active catalyst catalyst the electrolyte was 20% NaOH solution how the zinc was oxidized at the anode and how the oxygen was reduced at the cathode the overall reaction is zinc plus half o2 useless to zno this is the battery is having long shelf life when it was sealed it is also having high energy density it is used in large number of low power ba batteries and it is also having high energy density with this we are concluding the zinc air battery nowadays we have many of the people are using zinc air battery which is also used as a reserve battery in the next class we are discussing about the secondary batteries